Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm uh, picking up at a friend of mine's nursery today. This is uh, Superior Plants. Uh, this is a friend of mine named Jason Stevens. Uh, really unique nursery. He, he actually grows some uh, super interesting, uh, kind of hard to find things. Uh, and he goes up to the uh, Pine Knot uh, open house, um, which I'll go up to at the, uh, I think it's the last two weekends in February and the first two weekends in March, Pine Knot Nursery. Uh, which specializes in hellebores. They have other things too, but they specialize in hellebores. They have an open house and they invite some other nurseries that have super unique things to that open house. Jason is one of those that goes up there. Um, I'm not getting a Kanjiro camellia, but I wanted to start uh, in this group. Uh, Kanjiro is a great uh, camellia sasanqua right here that's pink. Uh, big giant group of them. He's growing them in uh, gallon pots here. Uh, he roots them in and starts them and a lot of them go to other nurseries to grow out and finish. Some go directly to garden centers and other, he, other things he does are these uh, kind of specialty sales events. So I'm going to show you a few things I am picking up today and then I'll expand on this and show you some videos individually of the plants when I uh, use them in my landscape. So again, I'll talk about individual uh, varieties when I'm uh, putting them in the ground at the house. I'm getting this variety of sweet box right here that, uh, Wow, it's super fragrant as I'm standing uh, over the top of it. And this is a very early flowering variety. I'm shooting this like the third week in January and it's in bloom house, in bloom here. It is in a house here, so it's a little ahead of where it would have been outside, but still, still very, very early. He grows several different uh, Aspidestra or uh, cast iron plants. Um, this one right here is stripes. I have this one uh, at the house with that center that center stripe in it. Um, just lots and lots of great varieties of these. Today though, I'm carrying out uh, several Daphne. And so there's a, a green foliage variety here and then a variegated one uh, right here. This is uh, actually Aero Marginata. I grew both of these at my nursery, just a plain green variety. And then there's kind of a plain Jane uh, uh, variegated one with it just outside edge. It's absolutely beautiful. I don't want to take away from how beautiful it is, but then uh, this one over here uh, is another one I want to that I, I really have wanted for a long time. This one's called Wild Winter. And look at the uh, variegation on this thing. Um, that's what I mean by that one's a little simpler. Um, Wild Winter is really, really beautiful, but I'll talk more about it again when I'm putting them in the ground. There's some interesting things uh, in this house. Uh, this Nandina is called San Gabriel. It's a super fine textured Nandina. I'm grabbing one of these. I uh, really don't have room in my two tenths of an acre lot for um, a witch hazel that gets large uh, like Arnold's Promise. I would like to have one, but uh, again, I just don't really have the uh, space for them. But he's got lots of those in here. He's got some crimson candle uh, camellias right here. This is one of my favorite. You see the flower buds on it right now. Great clean foliage on this variety. Always super, super reliable flowering. I liked growing this one as a nurseryman because it was always super reliable. He's got lots of camellia varieties in here that are budded up uh, right here uh, to bloom later. A beautiful variegated Akuba that I'm going to take one. Uh, I'm going to take one of these as well. Here's some Edgeworthia that he's uh, rooting and uh, I'll show you one that I'm, I'm grabbing one of these as well. I'll show it to you in the next house. Uh, just again a super interesting uh, collection of uh, kind of specialty specialty plants here. Uh, this uh, this is that Akuba. Again, I'm carrying one of these uh, carrying one of these out. There's a camellia in this house called April Remembered. A really nice group. Really nice group of this one. Light pink, kind of white uh, toward the center. Uh, it looks like it's going to be pinker than it is um, before it opens. You see, it's kind of a darker pink bud, and then the middle of the flower ends up opening white, even as it starts to open. It looks like it's going to be very, very pink. And it's just kind of a very light pink on the inside. Beautiful flower. Uh, moving up here uh, just a little bit more. Here's a group of Edgeworthia. I'm going to pull one out of this group. They're budded up here. Of course, when they're this small, you don't get a whole lot of flowers on them, but they're budded up here. These flowers will start opening, start opening pretty soon. I'll talk more about those uh, um, pretty soon. There's a few more here uh, as well. I found a really nice group of uh, Temple Bells Pieris right here. Look at all the flower buds on these. It's a really nice group of uh, one gallons here. I'm sure destined for uh, another nursery to grow them out uh, larger. That's not an easy plant to uh, to start and grow out that nicely. Uh, this is my favorite Elysium right here. This is a uh, Woodland Ruby uh, Elysium. 
It's uh, got really beautiful flowers on it uh, when it's in flower. And just really one of my favorites. I got several Elysium in the yard. I don't know if I have room for another one, but uh, this one is actually my favorite one. He grows an absolute ton of Shindo viburnum. Roots them and uh, grows them out in these trade gallon pots. And he says only just a few nurseries buy them all. Um, these sell so quickly, everybody using them uh, for screening plants. I'll show you outside real quick this, uh, the screen he's growing to uh, get the cuttings for these. They're right there. Um, they're probably about four to five feet tall at this point. He does some grafting as well. And these are uh, grafted uh, Tokyo Tower uh, Cyananthus retusus or Chinese fringe tree that I have in my yard. It's kind of that upright, narrow growing uh, Chinese fringe tree. This one is super, super interesting to me. These are um, uh, Ponsiris or flying dragon um, Ponsiris right here or contorted uh, Ponsiris that um, he's growing as standards. He has spent a lot of time getting these to single trunk pieces and getting them grown up this tall and then cut off at the top right here. So then they'll um, become a shrub up at the top. And he actually roots these for years. I, uh, um, I, I grew flying dragon for a long time and I, I did them from seed and, uh, but he actually roots these. I'll show them to you in the next house. So you can see just how wicked, uh, this plant actually is. And I used to tell people when I sold them at the farmer's market, that you put them under your daughter's windows, uh, was the best use for uh, flying dragon, uh, hardy orange. But, uh, he does these from, these are done from rooted cuttings. And I, when I tried them from cuttings, I just get a few spindly little roots on them. It took forever. He's, he somehow perfected it here. When I do them from seed, um, some of them come out and they weren't contorted and I'd have to cull through them, the ones I did from seed. But by doing them from rooted cuttings, he gets clones um, and they're every one going to be the same. So, um, but really interesting, really super, super interesting plant. It's just absolutely wicked. The thorns can be three inches long as this plant matures. Here's some K. Paris magnolias this this magnolia has is one of the most consistent for having that great b brown back on the leaf um a lot of this this one's this one's always popular for that reason a lot of uh, people who do wreaths uh at christmas time uh, with magnolias uh, use k paris because again it's so consistent uh, that coloration so you can use the top and the bottom of the leaves uh blended uh, some up and some down uh, into a wreath to get that uh that two-tone coloration. Uh, let's head on up here. There's a few camellias uh, in this house. Uh, this is Autumn Spirit uh, right here on the right, our hardy into zone six. Again, I would spring plant things um, that you're trying to push the hardiness on. But, um, there's a uh, ornamental blueberry right here, which turn these beautiful colors. Again, we're inside a house, and so it's not as cold as it would be outside, but outside these turn this really nice, uh, Get this purple hue on them uh, in the winter time really soft textured soft textured plants but that's a, that's an ornamental blueberry right there and I, like i say i think i'll wrap this video up at this point and uh, i'll see you uh, back at the house in some other videos and show you these things going in the ground thanks for watching